A typical Mara season will run from June to November and um, so it could consist of anything from 20 to 22 weeks and then normally when we get to the end of November it will start slowing down um, and, the, and the staff will start packing up camp and stuff like that, taking stock tags and so forth. So we do have a bit of a breather between let's say November and February and then um, the hardcore planning will start sort of end of February towards March again and that could entail stuff like ordering wine, ordering new stock, new caps, new buffs, new water bottles, um, new gifts for the guests, topping up on our chef uniforms or staff uniforms, linen. So there's a lot of background planning that goes into it. Um, and then normally, yeah, then we normally, a month or so before, then um, we ship everything back up to Kenya. And from there, Billy will take over with his team in Kenya and start setting up. Okay, so on paper it's a nine to five job, but it's, it's definitely not. I mean, our team is always available after hours. We have a dedicated emergency phone that rotates through the office, so you can always reach one of us. Our mobile numbers on our signatures, so guests are constantly in contact with us via mobile communication as well. So yeah, we can say it's a nine to five job, but there's a lot more to it. I mean, we do work in the evening sometimes just because it's so convenient with the gap between the states or Australia um, so that we can correspond with, with our clients easily. So in our office normally it would be myself and Laura and Jono involved, quite heavily involved with Amara, um, Jerry also contributes and then when it comes to the Amara arrangements, the guest logistics and liaison, it's normally myself or Tanya. Our team in Kenya consists of about seven to eight permanently employed people and then when it's in season, so going back to June to November, then that number can double up in camp. So then we'll have staff such as the housekeepers, back of house maintenance and all of that. So it could go up to about 16 to 17 people that are actually involved in camp um, when, when it is Mara season. I can't actually think of any issues off the top of my head because I think what happens is we deal with it and we just store it away in a very dark little space. But a lot of the time there are typical issues like missing flight connections or not getting the right um, e-visa or not getting an e-visa. And then also just not booking the appropriate hotel. So maybe a guest has decided to book their own hotel and it is situated 30 minutes from the airport, whereas the rest of our group is staying five minutes from the airport. So there are small issues that that creep up, um, but none that are massive and everything can normally be dealt with on the ground. There was one incident that I can remember last year where two, a couple was flying to the Maasai Mara, one of which needed a visa and, and the one didn't. So um, the gentleman checked in at the airport, everything was fine, he got his boarding pass, um, he didn't need an e-visa for Kenya and when his wife tried to check in she hadn't done the e-visa. So now we're in a situation where she is being offloaded because she can't travel and he's already technically boarded because he has his boarding pass. Um, so it was a bit of a hairy hour trying to offload both of them, trying to cancel um, the hotels, trying to shift them onto a different Mara week, trying to reallocate park fees. So th there's a lot that goes into play when, when something like that happens. Um, but I don't think it's anything that our team can't handle. Our team does foresee situations like that and because we have dealt with them, because our company has matured, we, we can deal with it. A separate logistics team is absolutely crucial because when you're out in the field and you're traveling and a situation does arise, at least you have a support team back home that can help you out. They can implement flight changes, they can cancel hotels so the guests don't fa face extra penalties. Um, they can just handle the situation and action anything that needs to be done. If you were a one-man band in that situation, I can't imagine how difficult it might be to console the guests, rearrange everybody's details, um, evacuate the person that needs to go out and then still take control on the ground by managing debates happening or people feeling that this might be dealt with better. If you have a logistics team in place, you're receiving clear instructions as to how to handle the situation, the next step forward, and it's just streamlined from there.